So the current stage of genomics cannot be talked about without talking about disruptive technologies. I'm not sure which phrase to use, uh, space race, gold rush. Genomics is driving a lot of different industries people aren't very aware of. Outsiders will come into our communities and take our blood and they'll take our data. They're trying to find a way to commodify this and make money off of this. From 1492, we have been exploited at every turn. For the longest time, things have been done to us or for us, and very rarely ever by us or with us. It's operating in such a way that the data is being extracted without clear material resources being provided in return. Biodata is becoming something that has value. And I think as Lakota people, we don't really um, understand that. When are we going to catch up? When are we going to stand up and do something ourselves and put a stop to this? They're moving, and they're moving fast, and we need to do whatever we can. The Native Biodata Consortium is the first Indigenous-led biological and data repository. The Native Biodata Consortium is a kind of legal and research safe house so that the data collected from Indigenous people uh, can be leveraged to help Native people. Its essential, I guess, duties or functions um, is acting as a biobank of sorts for the community. It's an opportunity for tribes to be able to work independent of federal infrastructures or academic institutions to do things like analyze and collect data, to be able to store biological specimens, to have certain different types of laboratory work performed. And it kind of stands as a centerpiece for what Indigenous-led science could look like. Which is important, so their data, their biological samples can't be misused by outside people or governments, etc. You kind of can think of it as like an extra layer of encryption, you know, to protect them as a people. We're always having people uh, coming here to study us, you know, because uh, we're, we're some of the least studied people. When somebody comes here and talks to us about helping ourselves or someone else, our way is to give. And if all you have to do is take a little bit of blood from me and I'm gonna help someone, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do whatever I can to help people. And we don't realize while that's happening that we're being exploited. The idea is that if you collect a lot of data from a lot of different people in this genomic space that you'll be able to create solutions for mankind. But because of our not only unique history with uh, Europeans, but also our unique history in the places that we live. Our data is very valuable and will help the world, but we'll be the last recipients of that help. You know, we really want to ensure that the data that um, is about us and concerns us is governed by us. Because that makes sense from a justice point of view, right? We want to ensure that statements that are made about Indigenous peoples, that affect Indigenous peoples, that those statements are governed and stewarded by us. We want to raise our own scientists. We want them to be able to operate in a lab that's located locally for, for the benefit of them so they don't have to go anywhere. Not only do we answer community-based questions, but also it solely revolves around that by having a community advisory board. So in a way, we're more of a, we could say we're more of a bio credit union. We're really hoping that through this project and through this organization that we're going to be able to um, protect our people, protect our people from exploitation because so many people are, you know, <laughs> the rich are just getting richer and they're doing it on the backs of poor people and minorities. And I don't want our people to be exploited in that way. And we don't want that, our data, to be somebody's goose that laid the golden egg. If there's any money to be made off it, and that's not our goal here, if there's any money to be made off it, that money should be ours because it belongs to us, the data belongs to us.
So the way that the Native Biodata Consortium is tackling this very thorny issue of deriving benefit from science uh, without being harmed by capitalism um, is that we are using the limited autonomy of domestic dependent nations in the United States, their geographic boundary and their legal jurisdiction to protect the samples and claim some sort of ownership over those samples and data. So that's what we're hoping to do at the Native Biodata Consortium, is to provide an alternative to that which we sure that any research that involves indigenous communities has tribal governance over the, the research that results from the data that comes from us. Uh, the Native Biodata Consortium works with the researchers and the participants to try to keep things focused from the participants' perspective. One of the ways that we do that is that we made it a point to do what we're doing here on the Cheyenne River Indian Reservation under the umbrella of a sovereign nation in the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. For example, my research project at OSU pertains to the Lakota and rheumatoid arthritis, and I'm looking at their gut microbiome. So Native Bio kind of acts like the middleman between me and the people of Cheyenne River while having Cheyenne River people still active within the research. Native Bio had to communicate with the Lakota on Cheyenne River about the study. They needed to understand why I was doing it, and then they needed to be willing to contribute to the study. That gives them informed consent on who, what, when, why. It also empowers them to decide, hey, I would really like to know what's going on and why we are having this higher incidence of rheumatoid arthritis, and I want to participate in the study. And then they donate their sample, and then once the analyses are done, they will get the genomic data back, then they will get the benefits of what my analysis says. We feel that if the things that were being done in Indian country with respect to research were being done in a way that was maximized to the benefit of the participant and the locality, there wouldn't be a reason for us. So the Native Biodata Consortium can set an example for the world of healthcare and genomics because we will introduce the very much needed nuance that politicians, corporations, and the public need to know about this kind of information and science. MBECs only survives because of trust relationships with tribal nations. One of the main goals is to get tribes in this region all pulling in the same direction, all thinking on the same page, and uh, hopefully all storing their samples and data with us. We are the first ones out of the gate that we know of in the U.S. that can lead and drive this type of model. And what we would like to see is for other communities to either create models of their own that are culturally consistent with their own ideals or work with us. We're doing for ourselves and the answers to our problems are within our own people. It's my hope that this will help us give, give us some ownership over our own data and to help us understand, to give us the education we need to understand what we're doing, what we're signing, what we're giving away, and hopefully stop it. Hopefully we'll be able to educate our people to the point where they'll stop and think, wait a minute, what is this gonna mean in the future? The power is already there, it's just a matter of exercising it. Like, these tribes, they're all sovereign nations. Inclusion without equity is just a buzzword. If you really want to advance data equity, then we really need to allow indigenous researchers to do the research that is by us, for us. It's important that we know that we have partners out there. We're not the only ones that are in the situation that we're in, but we're, we've been lucky enough to, be, to have been given the opportunity to do something about our situation. And we want to make sure that if you're in the same situation as us, that we can help you do something about yours as well. 30 years from now, if I were to close my eyes and try to see what the future would look like, it wouldn't just be us. There would be some form of what we're doing in every area that is socially disadvantaged, starting with, for me, 
because of where I come from, Indian country. There's going to become a time, I believe, that in order to keep who we are as indigenous to this land, where we are, because of the way technology and everything's going, it's going to depend on how much we know enough to safeguard who we are. <laughs>